Hello class, today we're going to be learning about what polar and nonpolar covalent bonds are. So these are going to be just specific types of covalent bonds. And we learned a little bit about covalent bonds last week and what elements form covalent bonds, which will be our nonmetals. So when we have two nonmetals bonding together, that's a covalent bond. Uh, so on this periodic table, you can see that colored all of our nonmetals that want to go through covalent bonding. And I gave them a color coding here based on their electronegativity. Uh, so if you remember what electronegativity is, I like drawing like this sword because electronegativity is how badly an element wants to attract electrons, how badly it wants to steal electrons from another element. And you could see the higher the electronegativity, uh, the highest ones I put red, so fluorine has our highest electronegativity, um, followed by oxygen. Nitrogen and chlorine are both right around three. And then our other non-metals that are below three would be uh, what I colored green. So what we need to know in our covalent bonds is even though they're sharing electrons, the electrons that are being shared will be pulled closer to the atom with the higher a neg electronegativity. So not, they're not being shared evenly all the time. And what this means is that because electrons have a negative charge, and if they're hanging out closer to one element, wherever the electrons are closer to will have a partial negative charge, and the other side will have a partial positive charge. So now we'll go over a bunch of examples uh, of what this is gonna look like. So you'll have an idea, and we'll be referring to this periodic table and their electronegativities of these elements to see what element the electrons are going to want to be pulled closer to. So in our first example, we just got hydrogen bonded to a hydrogen. So these are the same element when you have the same element on both sides, they have the same electronegativity. So hydrogen has the same electronegativity as hydrogen. So those electrons are going to be shared very evenly. So I'll draw them very close to the middle. They're moving around, but they're shared evenly. So that's a way of showing that they're shared evenly. So there's no charge on either side. So we're going to call it when there's no charge, this is going to be a non-polar bond. So now let's take a look at, at it, something else. So this one is hydrogen and chlorine on the other side. And if you take a look at our electronegativities here, Chlorine has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen, which means chlorine wants to pull those electrons closer to it. So if this is two electrons being shared, this line, we might imagine the electrons to be closer to this side. And because they're closer to the chlorine, that's going to give the chlorine a partial negative charge and our hydrogen, a partial positive charge. So because we have partial charges, that will make it a polar bond, a polar covalent bond. So that's what the difference is between polar bonds and nonpolar bonds. A polar bond is going to have the electrons not shared evenly, and it's gonna have uh, partial charges, 
whereas a nonpolar bond, they're shared evenly. So there's no partial charges here. So we're gonna go through some more examples. Uh, next one's gonna be two chlorine atoms. So if we got two atoms of chlorine, and because they're the same atom, you don't even have to look at this periodic table. Two chlorine, they're gonna have the same electronegativity. That means those electrons are gonna be right in the middle. They're being shared equally. That will be non-polar bond right there. Let's take a look at now, uh, if a hydrogen is bonded with an oxygen, will it be polar or non-polar? So if we take a look at our electronegativities, we could see hydrogen is less than three, Oxygen's right around 3.5. So oxygen has a higher electronegativity. So these electrons are going to be much closer to that hydrogen. And then we got to think, how does that influence the charge? That means my electrons have a negative charge. They're closer to this oxygen. That oxygen is going to be partially, let me, I'm off screen. There I go. Partially negative. And that makes my hydrogen partially positive. So because I got those partial charges, it is a polar bond. Going through a few more. See here we got two oxygen. So if you take a look, both of them are oxygen. If they're the same, it's always going to be shared equally. So here we got actually four electrons being shared equally non-polar all right so that one is non-polar let's take a look at this one we got carbon bonded to an oxygen and let's take a look uh to see let me keep this on here let's take a look to see uh, their electronegativities. So if we got carbon, carbon's below three. Oxygen is up at 3.5. So they're going to hang out closer to that oxygen side. So we'll put our, our electrons, draw them on that side. And that tells us that if our electrons are hanging out closer to this oxygen, electrons are negative charge. So this oxygen is going to have a partial negative charge. And because of that, our carbon over here, the electrons are farther away. That'll give it a partial positive charge. So that would be a polar bond. And we're not really worried about how much these charges are. There's something between zero and one. We just need to know that they exist. We'll do one more. All right, so this is carbon and hydrogen. So because they're different elements, they technically have a slightly different electronegativity. But if you take a look, they're going to be pretty close. So they're both under three. They're both pretty close to each other. So we're going to draw the electrons pretty close to the middle. So we're going to call this a non-polar bond. So key takeaways that we need to know, we need to know the charge of electrons, which is negative, and then we need to know electronegativities and how our elements wanna share the electrons. So if it has a higher electronegativity, like our oxygen, that's gonna draw the electrons closer to it and give it a partial negative charge. And that's what makes it polar when they're not shared completely evenly. All right, so I wanna end this video by going over some review of polar covalent bonds and non-polar covalent bonds and some of the similarities and differences between them. So a similarity is that they're both still covalent bonds. They're both types of covalent bonds. 
they both happen with our non-metals. But the differences are that in our polo, po polar covalent bonds, our electrons are not shared evenly. They're going to be closer to one of the atoms than the other atoms. And the atom that they are closer to, uh, that atom will have a higher electronegativity. The atom will want to take electrons more. And that atom will have a partial negative charge next to it because our electrons are negatively charged. And the atom with a lower electronegativity will have a partial positive charge because electrons are farther away from it. Uh, on the other hand, we could have a nonpolar covalent bond, and in these bonds, our electrons are shared evenly. Uh, so these happen between atoms that have the same or very, very similar electronegativity. And because of their same electronegativity, the electrons are right in the middle, so there's going to be no charges on our atoms. So that is a review of our polar and non-polar covalent bonds.